Oh no, another Volvo in the yard. And it's in almost exactly the same spot as the other one was. Now I know what you're saying. I've complained a lot about Volvos. And some of those Volvos I have an absolute uh, acrimonious relationship with when they're on another one. If you've seen that video that's gotten so many likes and dislikes and views called I'll, why I will never own a 99 or later Volvo. You can definitely uh, know why that that is. But anyway, let's take a look at this one. This is something, I'll tell you what I did here. Uh, I've been cruising around Craigslist looking for a, another car, something a little bit larger and with an automatic transmission to replace the Protege. The Protege is doing pretty good. Uh, it is what it is. It's a really kind of worn out car. The residence making their appearance. But it's doing okay. It's held up pretty good. The only thing I really had right go wrong with it was the uh, cam sensor went bad and dumped me on the side of the road. That was uh, a not a pleasant situation. And then what's funny, after about a month after I got that one replaced, a month or two, my brother's car did exactly the same thing, except his didn't strand him anywhere. It came close, but it didn't. But it brings us to now. So I've been uh, excuse me if I sit down a minute. I've walked all the way to the gas station and back. Uh, I'm letting the battery charge up on that car right now. That's what I'm doing. But anyway, so I was looking around on Craigslist, seeing what's out there, and I had a budget of $1,000 or under because I saved up some of my mileage money and had about that to spend. So did a lot of looking, and I'll tell you one thing right off the bat. There's not much to be had for under a thousand dollars. You would not believe the cars that don't run or wrecked or no title or just absolute junk or got something really expensively wrong with them on Craigslist for that amount of money. And I always get a laugh out of this when people say something like they'll say the only thing it needs is a piston rod or it needs a crankshaft or uh it needs a transmission, you know, they kind of portray it like it's really not that bad when it is bad. And it's not something you want to buy or spend any money on. There's, as a matter of fact, there's a one on there right now. <laughs> I saved just for the humor of it. Somebody looked like they had about a 98, or 97 or 98 Pontiac Grand Prix. And it obviously they had just coasted it into a parking lot and didn't even hardly get it in the space and parked it and just immediately put it on Craigslist. I said it blew up. <laughs> they wanted $800 for it. So anyway, I looked around, looked around, looked around, and just really wasn't finding anything worth even looking at. I had a few prospects, finally, and I was probably going to pick one out of those, and I'll tell you what they are. Uh, the first one was the Acura that we looked at at the uh, cheapo car lot, the repo car lot, and I was thinking about that one because it was 500 bucks. She was not going to come off that. And I considered that, and of course it had its pluses and negatives like they all do. And then there was a a Peugeot diesel, turbo diesel sedan, which I had one of those one time, and that's a very comfortable car, but it's almost, it's nigh impossible to find parts for them now. And plus the guy never did return my email, so that was that. And then there was a 2000 Buick LeSabre, which is not ever going to be very high up on my list of cars to own, that had some sort of electrical problem, which I, didn't even, I did not email her. And then there was a Toyota Matrix XR that was parked, and they said it needed to be removed from the property, yada, yada, yada. And uh, I emailed them and I haven't actually checked that email yet because I've went ahead and did this but uh, obviously the engine's no good in it and the engines for those cars run about a thousand dollars for one so I wasn't seriously considering that and the two contenders that came down to the wire uh, it came down to this car and a 97 Mercedes E420 e which is a V8 powered 210 class Mercedes, 210 chassis Mercedes, I'm sorry, called it E-Class, and it was running hot. 
and you know I could have got it cheap the only thing that turned me off on that car was um, two things that you know if it had to have an engine in it the engines aren't that expensive actually but the transmission that's that five speed uh, 722.6 series transmission is a five-speed automatic and they're known to have their problems and I didn't ever find any a new uh, used one at all anywhere so I always check that before I buy a car I always research the prices on stuff like motors and transmissions and anything could go bad like that so you know I was considering that and he was desperate to sell it he said I'd, he'd deliver it but it didn't have a sunroof in it, and I know that sounds kind of silly on a used car, but I really wanted the car with a sunroof. And uh, he's had some kind of thing where he was going to have to, um, he's going to have to uh, go get the title out of a loan thing. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, hurry it up, Tyler. Brings us to this one. This car was in Chattanooga, and it seems like the last, I think the last three cars I've bought came from outside of Chattanooga or in Chattanooga, the Infiniti and the uh, the Mazda Protege I have now, and then a few others, that black Protege I had for a little while, and then there's a couple you guys never saw because I didn't win on YouTube back then. It was a uh, 98 Jetta, which I drove for a while, and then there was a 2000. Daewoo Nubria, I call it. It's called a Nubira, but uh, I didn't keep it long. That was a POS. So, anyway, a lot of cars are coming from there. You can't ever find them around Huntsville, hardly. So, anyway, I emailed them back and forth and talked to them on the phone. And, well, no, actually, I just talked to them on the phone on this one. So, make a long story pretty short. Uh, we went up and got it today. And I think it has a turbo problem. I'm not sure about that. It may well do it. And it may or may not need an alternator, but I think that's not the alternator. I think it's the battery. Because she said something about Kevin having to jump it off. But if she jumped it off and could drive, that's not the alternator. Because the alternator, if the alternator's not working, it won't, it'll just go dead and that's it. So but anyway, it's a 90, it's a, it's a 89 Volvo 760. Uh, turbo wagon. They're all turbos. The wagons are all turbos, I think. I think that's the only engine they came with. The 760, from what I saw, could come with a turbo four-cylinder, or I think they call it the PRV V6, Peugeot, Renault, Volvo V6, which has not had a very good history. This car don't have that. And so, uh, it's been in really good shape on the outside, and the inside is not bad. And we're going to take a look at it here but it did run we got it started and then we think it ran out of gas and we had to push it up on the trailer so without further ado let's take a look there's the bumper that was in the back back there and she, it's not in very good shape she's i asked her what happened to it and she said that she clipped somebody a little bit and the bumper quote flew off into the middle of the road <laughs> so there's the Looks like there's the impact right there. And there's a, kind of that door is hanging a little bit. So. <laughs> That's the only thing about these cars. It, the fasteners and the plastics are just shit on these cars and they turn even worse. That's something that Volvo and, and the rest of the European manufacturers have never got right as far as stuff like plastics. So, we'll look at the engine bay first. I hope my battery's still charging. Ah, this battery charger is losing its connection. Very like a thing on the Uh, 
Here's the engine. Let's take a look at it. Looks pretty well together under here. I've not ever had one of these cars. I had a 90 model 240. And, uh, oh, I see something ugly over there. Look at that. Jeez Louise. Yeah, you've heard the story about the harnesses on these cars. We're probably fixing to find more of that. But I had a 9240, and that was a good car. It was not a turbo. And this one I noticed off the top right away has got the wrong oil cap on it. I've never seen that kind of oil cap. And it's got oil blowing from somewhere. You don't believe how many cars I see that have oil blowing up. The last three I've looked at. That Mazda bot did, and this car does, and that car at the junkyard did, of this repo lot. So I don't know where that's coming from. I see a new water pump, looks like. She said she drove it up to about four months ago. And this is the intercooler hoses, and they feel kind of... I don't know how soft they're supposed to be, but that... Oh, that, look at this. Somebody I know better than that. There's a radiator, I guess. Somebody just <laughs> sit tied it in there. Golly. So we'll take a look at the other side. That is. Transmission cooler. It's not the inner cooler. That's the inner cooler right here. She said she thought it needed an alternator belt. I don't think so. Okay. I don't know what that is exactly. Somebody's. That's not bare wire. I thought it was, but it's got coating on the outside of it. Hmm. 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 Yeah, those intercooler hoses don't feel too good. But plastic stuff out here looks pretty good. Red block engine. Cornering lights are gone outside of them. That's common. I have to pick up a couple of those, I guess. Hmm. Tires are eh. This looks a little old. Is this a wheel? It sure is. I thought that was a hubcap. It's a wheel. Yeah, 195-60-15s. No rust on it. It came from Florida and it is straight, straight. Just dirty. It was sitting under a carport. crud up there from the carport. Some bird or something was in it. Of course it's got the nasty old the nasty old tail light lenses. They're about to break. The lift struts are good. So I'm going to probably replace those. It's got some eggy plastics here. Well, this stuff it just feels fragile. I don't know what Volvo was thinking when they did that. But here's the interior of the back. It's in pretty good, good shape. I was hoping this car had a third row seat in it, but I don't think it does. I think it's got just a storage compartment here. Yep, no third row seat. Well, uh, there's that. I was wondering where that went. It's right there. Is it broken? I guess it just fell off. Some kind of unidentified bags. There's the jack. There's the spare. Oh, I'm going to show you guys something. Look here. I don't know what that is, I think. It's 
see this box if this is what I'm thinking this thing is. This is, if you're looking here, you older guys about my age and up will know exactly what this is. Look on the outside first. That is a cell phone antenna. I know what you're saying. What? That's no cell phone antenna. It's supposed to be glued right here. That actually goes through the, well, no, it doesn't go through glass, but it's mounted. One's mounted on the outside, and then this normally is glued right here. And what it is, is back in the day, before everybody had portable handheld cell phones, uh, they might have had some cell phones, but the big thing with a car back then was to have a car phone. And so I'm going to clip this video here before it gets too awful long, and we're going to start a new one. I'm going to tell you a story about the car phones. So I'll join you up front.